Welcome everybody here in Twitch chat and also on YouTube if you're watching this video later on over there. For our next deck, which is going to be Marty Humans, we have another donation to try out a little bit different version of Marty Humans than what we did the other day. So the other day we tried this uh, deck and didn't have a whole lot of success. And I was pointing towards having three color aggro decks being pretty difficult to work with from a mana base standpoint and having to curve out and just how good the format is, is that the, the aggro decks kind of struggle a little bit without the interaction that other decks have. But uh, we're going to try it out again. So we're going more two color heavy this time. That was one of the changes that the, the person that made the deck made. That's the main, main thing. So as you can see, we're basically just red white and even we are very white heavy with having Benelish Marshall, which could be pretty good for us. So we're basically just red white. The only black splash we have here is just for Judith, which isn't which is a very powerful and reasonable card to have for sure. And then we also have some mortifies. I'm not so sure about these mortifies. They are multicolor, which is good for Hero of Precinct One. But honestly, it looks kind of like we have a whole lot of things that aren't really multicolor. So we'll see if we can actually really take advantage of Hero of Precinct 1 too much. And, you know, besides that, as far as black sources, we have Unclaimed Territory, which is like a, a main black source for Judith, but Unclaimed Territory, of course, cannot cast Mortify. So I only have nine black sources here to cast Mortify. So a little worried about that. I'm thinking that maybe Lava Coil or Lightning Strike could be better. But we'll see how that plays out. Uh, we also have a whole lot of Dire Fleet Daredevils, which this card's pretty good, and and I, I like it. It's not necessarily the card we want on turn two, but we have 12 other good cards to play on turn two, so, you know, we can wait. This is, even though it's in the two-drop slot, it's really like a four or five mana card, and so I think that works out pretty well. I think Daredevil works out pretty well. Hey, what's up, Matthew? And, yeah, we have the Kite Sail Freebooters in here instead of Duress, still looks like. Uh, I remember we talked about that last time. I would have preferred Duress, but... We still got the free booters in here, so we got that. Um, Integrity Intervention is kind of a weird sideboard card. I feel like this card is really good to go along with Swiftblade Vindicator, but looks like we've cut Swiftblade Vindicators for something a little more uh, consistent, like Tithe Taker. And so I don't, I don't think Integrity Intervention is needed at all in the sideboard. Like I don't really know what it's great against. Honor Guard's a very good sideboard card. Coil, Unbreakable Formation are pretty nice. And I do like Chance for Glory as like the one of sideboard card against um, the Wilderness Reclamation decks. Like if they're trying to fog, you can take it. Like they're going to fog your lethal attack. You can take an extra turn and kill them there. Hey, what's up, Jelly Tug? So, so those are like some things that I am uh, kind of looking at with the deck before we play it. But let's go ahead and give it a try. Hopefully it'll work out better than the last time that we played it with just kind of sticking towards two colors here uh, dominantly with the red and white. So Marty Humans. All right, so Nerzilla says you played the Dupla Ooze before. How are you liking its progression? It was a whole lot of fun the last time we played it. Uh, really enjoyed it. I think we had, I think, pretty sure we went 5-0. It was either 5-0 or 5-1. I'm pretty sure it was 5-0 and, and a real quick 5-0, but it was a lot of fun. 32 days still? Ah, that's still a long ways away. I thought it was closer than that. Okay, we can keep this. We can keep this. Unclaimed Territory is really nice here, being a black source for Judith and a white source for Benelish Marshall. It's quite there. Uh, Koob asks, are the only decks you play in best of one is mono red? I've, I don't have a ton of experience with, with best of one, but the other day I was playing some, this was about, I don't know, a week ago or so, and I, it was kind of like a third of, you know, like a little less, but it was almost like a third of the matches were mono red, a third were, a third were, uh, which one do I, Marshall or Judith? I think we'll lead with Judith. I guess Marshall hits harder. 
There's like a third were mono red, a third were Esper control, and then like a third were other kind of thing. Esper control is really big as well in best of one. I'm predicting Esper control is going to be the most popular deck at the Mythic Invitational. I think that's a pretty easy prediction this weekend. Alright, Jelly Tug's been playing the Mardu Battle March deck. Got a 9x flip on Mirror March yesterday. That's amazing. What what card was it? We didn't get to do any cool Mirror March stuff, which is unfortunate. going on over there that was a great draw step for us we had nine black sources in the whole deck and we drew one great draw step for us now our opponent's just dead I don't really know what they could have to survive here Otherwise, we were going to be playing our Benelish Marshal, being able to attack with everything. Which it still basically would have been dead. <laughs> you got a 4x flip on Demanding Dragon? Nice. That's exactly what I wanted to do. Nice. You have 9x on Bell Haunt. So just discard your whole hand. I'll gain 27 life. Alright, so gates. So this is like 4 color gates with Bolas. Certainly going to be a, a deck that has a lot of sweepers. So Unbreakable Formation seems pretty valuable against a deck with a lot of sweepers. Daredevil, maybe... Hmm. I can't just have this many three drops, though. That's the other problem with Mortify instead of, like, Lava Coil, is that it would at least eat have your two drop slot and not your three drop slot. It's, it's annoying being on the three drop slot. Daredevil though is, I think I'm going to be cutting those. They're not going to, like they don't usually have a lot of instants and sorceries for me to grab with Daredevil. Oh, I could see hero, playing hero out. I could see that with them having sweepers and stuff. I could certainly see Hero out. Like, the value of the extra 1-1s one are not very much. I'm going to split the difference. Let's go 1-1. One, one. one Hero, one Daredevil out. I don't think... Like, sure, they played a Bolus, but that's probably about all that honor guard's gonna do the other thing they could have the three four angel but overall honor guard just being one power does not hit very hard and it won't really help us too much in general so th our lands aren't aren't helping us out too much here and neither is like triple tajik but i don't really want to go to five That hurts. That hurt. Definitely hurts not being able to play a card on two. Hey, what's up, Spencer? So they have all five colors in their deck. That's red, black, blue, white, and green. They have all five colors. That's not a good minus from the opponent. Because that just kills their Nebraska.
Hey, Cali Commuter, being on that five month streak. Welcome back. Thank you very much for that continued support. So that's going to be 136. Ooh, our countdown is getting there. Thanks, Cali. So they did not draw a land. No, they do not have a land in hand. So they didn't just put a land into play with Growth Spiral there. Tajik does really help us out against Gates of Blaze. So I could go Hero and Hunted Witness, but I feel like they may have another Gates of Blaze for how they fired off that other one like that. So I want to get the Tajik in play first. Plus Tajik pumps up this Flyer, so now like a 3-3 three, three Flyer is a, you know, a real threat when they're at 9. We don't want to see that Angel, though, gain him a lot of life. They are manually tapping all their lands. Your crew for my freedom? <laughs> A fair price. Do I... Go with another Tajik and just attack them for six and put them down to three and just ignore Angrath. So then I have my two lethal attackers. Hey, <laughs> baloney pony. Good vacation there. I'm kind of leaning that way. I think so. It does allow me just to play the Hunted Witness as well. So, like, one Gates of Blaze isn't going to do it because of Tajik. They have to have something for my Flyer. Yeah, doing really well, King Toll. Yep. Happy Monday. <laughs> no, our our opponent just gates, and they, they've had... Yeah, we, we've missed a couple land drops. They also play gro growth spirals that allow them to play extra lands. So there was the Ablaze. They had two more Ablazes, though. No fire. No steel. I gotta get rid of hero. So I hit them down to one or I kill the Angrath. Guess we're not really winning a, a long game anyway. So they, if they are able to stabilize here, it's going to be tough for us to win. We have like heroic reinforcements and Judith. They're going to be the cards that we're going to be looking for. Hey, Yud, doing really well. Doing really well. So this at least means that if they have like a creature to block. Both of these things are lethal. Alright, so they've played their lands, drawn their cards. 
I got four mana. And we got there. Tajik was really clutch. Our opponent had three Gates of Blazes. And our Tajiks just made those cards not nearly as valuable. So we are 1-0. GG's. Good job, Tajik. Good job. All right, match number two. I can take this. We have our five color land here with the unclaimed territory and you know, ones, twos, threes. Honestly, don't know Inevitable Peanut. Not played uh, Green White Valley Town since last summer. Haven't played Modern at all since last fall. Alright, looks like. Got Kogari, maybe some Soltai. Let's see. Let's go with. Let's get this Boros Challenger in there. Save the bodyguard. For turn four, where we can play three drop and bodyguard to protect the three drop on turn four. So at least no wild growth walker. That's that's good for us. They're keeping a carnage tyrant. So Marshall allows the challenger to stay alive. Where if I play Tajik and attack with all, they can just block Tajik and then I just have the other two. Ooh. Three, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. It's just lethal. I think they kept that Carnage Tyrant. That was helping them. Yeah. Reinforcements. Dang. Oh, Deckmaster. Thank you. I didn't... I didn't start Deckmaster on my end. Something I forget about quite a bit. If y'all ever see the Deckmasters not turned on, just let me know. Even if you're somebody that doesn't necessarily need deck master if you see it's not on just let me know so i can make sure to turn it on for people that use it so we have all these honor guards definitely in i think i'm going to take out hero of precinct one because i'm going to bring in the x we're just not going to have very many cards for it I want these two lava coils in. But what am I taking out for lava coil? Probably Hunted Witness, right? Daredevil is nice with, like, Find Finality. I guess Daredevil is just not good with Honor Guard, though. But if I have an Honor Guard in play, I'm doing pretty good. Yeah, just cut Daredevil. And play a couple unbreakable formations also. No, I'm big, that just doesn't save my creatures from... Hmm. Doesn't save them from finality. If I play a couple integrities. 
Integrity can pop up a creature in combat and keep my creature alive and, and have theirs die, like whenever they think that, that we're going to trade, you know, like a couple of 3 twos like we had before. Or potentially we could have like a Benelish Marshal, you know, it's 3-3, three, three, and they play like a Finality and we save the Benelish Marshal with Integrity. Hey, Dodger Dog. Happy Monday. I should probably kill that thing before something bad happens. So they are Sultai. We didn't see any blue last game. And they were sitting back with that cast down. Waiting on a good target for it. <laughs> Chance for glory in the sideboard is... Uh, it's designed for the uh, the matchups with like the fogs. Um, I guess that's like Mar uh, Simic Nexus. So they try to you know to stay alive for enough turns to to take all the turns and everything. And Chancer Glory helps you take that extra turn to kill them. So I'm running with Judith here because of cast down. I think it's very likely my opponent has another cast down. And so going with the Judith here because it dodges cast down. I did like drawing a black source with unclean territory, but unfortunately these mortifies are not very good with those black sources. So Crowd the Carnarium wasn't exactly what I was expecting. Not a good one for me. The wild wasn't meant to be contained. Come to me. Ah! I'm a survivor. So finality would wreck us, but this is our deck. No one you know, like we get wrecked like by, do. you know, sweepers, and that's just kind of how it is. So they'll gain three. Well, them shocking in there. Looks like it'll likely be finality. They have Cry of the Carnarium also. Along with Finality. Hunter Witness just doesn't seem like a very valuable card. I think I'm just going to play Hero Precinct 1 over Hunted Witness. Yeah, we don't have that tower defense. I know, right?
We need those tower defenses. We need that defense. Defense. All right, going to a game three. All right, we're all in on this Takali Honor Guard. Not necessarily all in. I mean, we have Marshall and then he heroic reinforcements. But hopefully, Takali Honor Guard is awesome. Hope they don't have cast down again. You know, doesn't die to cry the Carnarium. Ooh, Tajik. Tajik's a good draw with Honor Guard because the first time you mentor turns it into a 2-4. You get to mentor again, you can turn it into a 3-5, and then it doesn't even die to finality. Well, that's annoying. So play the Benelish Marshal first so that Tajik will be a 4-3 and will not get will not trade with a branch walker. Uh no. I think so there's a question, do you think the Mythic Invitational all the similar decks in the top eight as Kyoto did? Um, I'm not exact, honestly, I don't know exactly what tournament Kyoto was, but I don't believe so. If Kyoto was standard, which would be my assumption, because the Mythic Invitational is not standard, it is, it is the best of one format, and the best of one format is pretty different from standard. Uh, Ori, yes, the, the VODs are muted, but that's what the YouTube channel is for, Ari. So, yeah, if... Um, yeah, so that's where hopefully you're watching the replays or on the YouTube channel. Uh, have that all set up. It's not... Nothing's muted there. So it's going to be a whole lot of Esper Control. Esper Control is going to be the most popular deck. Do I play another card? I think so. And I think it's probably just Tithe Taker. I think we got it. Honor Guard likely did a whole lot for us this game. And there we go. Two and O. Oh. Good job, Scott Lee Honor Guard. Moving right along. Deck's working out better than it did last time. Benelish Marshall has been really nice. For sure. And our mana hasn't been too bad. We've been, you know, struggling getting black, but that's understandable. Alright, this is reasonable. It's... A little awkward how my second, you know, this land's going to come into play tapped. It will just play on turn two, but we have the double one drop opener, so we can play one drop, one drop. So it's not the worst. The good part about Mortify, though, even though it's a lot harder to cast than Lava Coil, 
Lava Coil is only good against creatures, where Mortify, there's a lot of matchups where opponents don't have creatures, where Mortify can still do stuff, because those, those matchups that don't have creatures have uh, cards like Wilderness Reclamation, or Search for Ascanta, or cards like that. Maybe they'll have like Ascanta, or Elder Street Born, or anything like that. So playing more Tithe Takers in case my opponent has like a Ritual of Set. Oh yeah. The Quasi Duplicate and Ooze is awesome. I don't know if you saw us play that deck the last time, uh, Lefus, but it was so much fun. We had some real crazy games. Like we had one opponent against dragons. They had like like five. I think they had like five dragons in play. Plus, then they are ultimated Sarkin to put in a bunch more dragons, and still couldn't handle the the biogenic oozes. <laughs> So blue black control, huh? Or blue black thought erasure. Didn't see anything else besides thought erasure. Kite sail freebooter is the card that's like screaming out at me to put in. I still don't love it though. Dies very easily. I don't think I want it against a very removal heavy deck. I think I want it against. Like, if this is Duress, I would probably put it in. However, I don't know what I want to do. Let's play, let's play these Unbreakable Formations and take out Mortify. And play an Integrity instead. And kind of go from here. Direfully Daredevils are basically removal. If our opponent boards in Thief of Sanity like every opponent always does. We could still have, you know, later on. We'd have to have more lands and everything. Hey, what's up, 1960 pal? Oh yeah, definitely having a good day. Ah, uh, yeah. Kite Tail Freebooter for Mono Blue mainly. That that makes a lot of sense. It's very good against Mono Blue. I like it there too. That's a, a great matchup for it. A deck with a lot of spells, but not very much removal. <laughs> That's where you want. You want lots of spells, not really removal. So opponents throwing a curveball. Turns out they're Esper. Didn't necessarily see that one coming. Next turn is likely Kaya's Wrath. Would I rather throw a Tajik in front of a Kaya's Wrath or a Boros Challenger? I guess Boros Challenger. That's also fine. go. That's what our black man is for. It is for Judith the Scourge Diva. That's real good.
Hmm. Not a card you see too often. We'll keep this land in hand in case of another uh, Basilica Bell Hunt. Yeah, I don't... That's just not a... I just think that's kind of a waste of a, a Daredevil, basically. Sure, I could Daredevil for Absorb first. But I, I honestly think that's a waste of a, a Daredevil. And I'd rather have Daredevil for, like, Contempt or... Uh, you know, mostly Contempt. That was the card I was thinking of. In case of a Teferi. Settle is just very uncommon. Not many people play it. You know, Daredevil cycle for with Revitalize is likely what I'm going to be doing here. But I wanted to give them another turn to play a Planeswalker. Why can't I daredevil that one? Oh. Never mind, I can. Potentially. Tilt. Let's I am not going to sit this one out. Want me to phase you out of time? We yeah, this Esper quick. matchup's pretty tough, except especially how our opponent's Esper's deck is built. They are very anti-aggro with all these with just you know a ton of revitalizes and, and everything and settle. They are very This is anti-aggro Esper. And so that is not good for us. Wow, they have multiple saddle wreckages. Interesting. Hey, what's up, Panther? It's going to be a tough one to win. Breakable formation, not so good against Settle. And I could could play Freebooter, I suppose. I guess so. We do have a chance for glory. Which is true. They likely have Kaya's Wrath and Cry of the Carnarium as well, though. Or, like, some of those as well. It's, it's not likely that Settle's their only sweeper. No, I don't have Mortify for Ascantic because I'm really worried about just doing 20 damage to them. I just don't I don't know how we're gonna do 20 damage. Honestly. Yeah, and, yep, and Daredevil can supply some removal if we need it. Well, that was a, an unplayable hand to another 
very bad hand. Um. So might as well just concede now. I don't think we can win. We have 22 lands in our deck. We didn't see more than one in any of the hands, unfortunately. So this is why Freebooter isn't that good of a card. Negate? Well, I don't have any spells. So, I guess we get the Cry of the Carnarium. Our opponent hasn't found white mana yet, though, even with the discovery. So that's really good for us. Never mind. Our opponent's deck is definitely built to beat ours. All these settles, cries, revitalizes, and Keep everything. Let's slow this down. Bell haunt. This is a very tough matchup for us. Especially we don't really have anything in our sideboard that's that's good, unfortunately. That didn't pan out. Hold that thought. Nova as well. Our opponent does have one goal in mind, and that's killing creatures. No, you're pretty right, Shade. Seems like every every time we have somebody stream sniping in here in chat, it's a control player. It's like if there's gonna be a stream sniper, you know what deck they're playing, Esper Control. That's alright. There's no way we win that either way. We had to have like a really good hand like we had the first game and you know not mulligan to five um, and our opponent stumble. Basically we have to have one of our best hands we could we could possibly have and we need our opponent to stumble for us to be able to win a match like that. All right, so we are two and one. What cards would improve that matchup in the sideboard? Uh, discard, like Duress. Angrath, as far as Planeswalkers go. Duress and Angrath. Those would be cards I'd be looking at. Uh, let's see. Let's go and try that. Let's 
see what my opponent does depending on what I want to do on turn two. If I want to just play Hero of Precinct 1 or not. Goblins. Because the other option besides playing Hero is we could play Tithe Taker here, then Benelish Marshall. Then we could play Hero plus Challenger in the same turn. To guarantee making a token. If I play Hero, then I'm playing like Challenger next turn. If it survives, which it doesn't likely survive. Let's go let's go this route. Does the mana of the deck support Angrath? Not really. Doesn't it, su it supports it easier than like Duress or Mortify though. You, like you don't need your black mana until like the very late game. You know, until you have five lands. But the answer is still no, not really. This means they have to double block to be able to kill either of our creatures. Since all their creatures are 1-1s. One Cavalcade of Calamity. That card will kill you fast. Let the Demir worry about witnesses. Like that hunted witness. So opponent's down to nine. They do have another removal spell for Judith. We at least get to kill one of their 1-1s. One and Skirk Prospector is a better card to kill than Goblin Instigator. Well, that's brutal. I should have stacked those the other way, but I guess it just doesn't matter which way I stack them. They just sack them both for mana in response anyway. If they have yet another Chain Whirler, that'll be very brutal. Good, not another Chain Whirler. Hey, what's up, James? Definitely, definitely doing, doing well. Alright, so they have a Lightning Strike over there. So let's go ahead and uh, strike down this Chain Whirler. Get six in there real quick. And Daredevil is an awesome draw. Hmm. So playing against goblins. Chain Whirler is a difficult card for us. Could play Honor Guards to stop it from killing stuff. But then if I play Honor Guards, then we don't get to Daredevil. Which Daredevil is also nice. As we saw that last game. So there's certainly a trade-off of putting Honor Guard in the deck. Because Honor Guard probably doesn't do anything except for that. I guess they're probably playing Siege Gang Commander too. So Siege Gang and Chain Whirler. So that's a decent amount of stuff. I could try playing Honor Guards plus Daredevils. Doesn't seem like the 
most beneficial thing to be doing. And if I play Lava Coil as well... I don't know exactly what I want to take out. Maybe Dauntless Bodyguard. Let's try this. I'm going to take out one Judith also for an Unbreakable Formation. I feel like Unbreakable Formation could be a really good card for us. I'll keep. And we have a, a new subscriber here, Max the Dax. Thank you so much, Max. I really do appreciate that. That is a good point that Tajik helps prevent against Chain Whirler as well. Sub battle countdown down to 135. Thanks, James, for getting those hype boats in there. I could see our opponent playing the 4-2 Goblin that uh, deals damage whenever it enters the battlefield, deals damage equal to its power. Uh, human. Or sorry, deals damage equal to the number of goblins you have to another to another creature, and so Honor Guard could be stopping that as well. You know, potentially, not exactly sure. Volley veteran, yeah. Oh yeah, we saw Goblin Instigator. Flame of Keld. That's a good card to Mortify. So do I trade Benelish, this Benelish Marshal for both of their creatures? I think so. With Flame of Keld... Making those things attack for a ton of damage here in a little bit. Plus, getting rid of that Chain Whirler makes, like, Tajik a whole lot better of, like, being able to attack in. Same with Hunted Witness. I think that's... You know, like, we actually get to attack with this other stuff. I think that's actually an okay trade. No, Rilo. I told you earlier I'm not a part of any team. Uh, Mr. Nobody says, hey, hey, Todd, I have a question regarding modern. I'm making a blue-black mill deck. All right, one second. Let's see. Sorry. There we go. Uh, making a blue-black mill deck, and I want to include Mind Funeral, but most lists I see don't bother with it. Is it just too high variance for modern? I don't know. I don't know if it is. I, I like Mind Funeral. I think go ahead and try it out for yourself and, you know, see if you if you want to keep it in the deck or not. Uh, I like Mind Funeral, though. I think Mind Funeral has a really high upside. Sure, you know, it does have, obviously, a very low floor as well if you just hit, like, four lands or four out of five lands, but especially in Modern, where people don't play that many lands uh, in a lot of decks, and people play a lot of fetch lands that get lands out of the deck, for three mana, it can mill over a ton of cards. Alright, so we are three and one. Ugh. 
Hey. Uh, Gyu Gyu. Good game. Very good match. The Cavalcade of Calamities, unfortunately, didn't get to do a whole lot for you. There. This is Gem It's Amazing, is the song. Yeah, there you go. You can give it the old college try. So we're going to have to shock either way, really. Hey, we have a new sub. Let's get some more hype in the chat. Uh, KRF. Using the Twitch Prime here. Thank you so much. There's our sub battle countdown. Keeps on going down. We're at 134 now. Steam vents, huh? Do I want to play Hero even though I have nothing to do with it? Or just play Tithe Taker? I guess I still play Hero, because even though Hero is likely to get shocked or lava coiled here, it's nothing more than a two mana two two. So it it like my opponent takes their turn off to use this lava coil here. Um, instead of like if I if I play Tithe Taker, they probably just ignore it. I do like having that lava coil in their graveyard for my Daredevil. They play some crackling Drake, I get to Lava Coil, they're Crackling Drake. Also, now if we draw any of our awesome three drops, it takes a coil out of their hand. You know, if we have Tajik, Judith, Benelish Marshall. Alright, more coils. I don't know what our opponent's doing here. Okay. Let's keep that chip shot going in. <laughs> Seems like we've attacked a, a lot of times, but our opponent is only at, uh, you know, 16. Even though we've attacked him four times already. <laughs> One ones do not deal very much damage at all. So I could, could have Daredevil Discovery. But I don't feel like that's the best thing we could have done. It just doesn't... <clears throat> sorry, it doesn't matter whether I shock or coil. I guess I'll leave two coils. We have four Daredevils in our deck. So we could potentially need those coils for like the Crackling Drake.
It's possible I just should not have taken the bait of the Electromancer also, especially for how this game's turning out to be with them having Drake Drake. Fortunately, we're one point away. And uh, not chump blocking last turn could certainly come back to bite me. But I, I kind of thought that the next turn, like whenever we chumped, we could. Yeah. So it didn't really ma didn't matter. I was thinking that, like, all you need to do is play a spell, and these crackling drakes are just bigger. So I could save more than seven damage by waiting a turn, which, you know, technically I'd did I would have saved another point of damage but uh yeah we were gonna die either way so I went too early on that daredevil and that's kind of the problem with hunted witnesses we got to hit them so many times with hunted witness yet we still died because hunted witness only deals one which is just not very much could see playing Freebooter in this matchup. They don't play as much removal. But like once Freebooter takes like a chart of course or whatever, what are we doing with it? It's not attacking through a Drake ever. I think I would like an integrity to help us survive a a damage based spell. Yeah, they could certainly have Cannonade. Cannonade's a little awkward with Electromancer, but that's certainly possible. I think I want to take out Witness. We saw like that last game it just not doing anything. It did a little bit, but it just wasn't impactful enough. Card doesn't seem bad. Breakable formation doesn't seem too bad. Let's get some spells. That's not a spell. Is the quasi ooze deck you're playing today the same deck list as the one you played the other day? Yep. Yep, same one. Spells. I need a lot of spells. Not much we can really do about this. We scry to land to the bottom.
So including that one, we've seen 10 cards and seven, seven lands and 10 cards. You know, 70%. That's pretty rough. Hey, what's up, Zerf? Not much we can do about it, though. We don't have the card draw and stuff. We have, we have like, Daredevils. Where Daredevil, you know, could hit us, like, Opt or Chart, of course. Where we can get some more spells. Yeah, the opponents also hit the two phoenixes. Okay. Daredevil's good. This is one of our very best cards in this matchup. Fortunately, can't get, you know, exile their whole graveyard, but we can go ahead and chart a course. That's like half the lands already in 13 cards. Well, 14 cards. You count the one on the bottom. The 14 cards you've seen like half the lands. Yeah, stream's going pretty good today. So we just started out. Uh, it looks like we're going to be 3-2 and two with Marty Humans, which is still a good improvement over the last time we played the deck. So I, how do I choose the decks? So I play donation decks that, I, if I have any donation decks for that day, I play those. These are, I don't have any other donation decks currently in the queue. Let me just see what I draw. There's. in case we drew something else. Obviously, they have the two phoenixes in, in the yard. We want to make it hard for them to get those phoenixes out. Um, right now, I don't have any other... Like, these are the only two donate... Like, so I don't have any donation decks for any future day right now, but if that's ever... You know, if we have donation decks for the, the day, I play those. And then besides that, I just try to play decks that have different colors. I don't want to play a bunch of decks that are, like, the same colors all day kind of thing. Uh, I try to have a variety that way. And unfortunately, that is probably it for us. <laughs> we have played those. We have played those those kind of decks, persi uh, persistent petitioners. Uh, played one of those before, and psychic corrosion mill. Yeah, I know. I made an Azorius mill deck. I believe it was psychic corrosion. Those are both a long time ago, uh, but yeah, I've played played those those kind of decks. The Persistent Petitioners, we played that when they had Popper available. And this was a couple months ago. And we tried it in Standard first. And then moved it over to Popper. And it was a lot more successful in Popper than in Standard. And the Psych Psychic Corrosion one went okay. That was probably like two, three months ago, though, or so. I know they're up on the YouTube channel somewhere. If you want to kind of scroll through the YouTube channel and look for Mill, like persistent, persistent petitioners and Mill. But they're up there somewhere. So anyway, so that was Marty Human. So it went better than previously. I was pretty impressed with the Daredevil and very impressed with Benelish Marshall. 
I liked those cards. I didn't. I was not very impressed with Hero of Precinct One, considering we didn't have very many multicolor spells. I'm not sure that that's worth it anymore with having like Tithe Taker, Daredevil, Hunted Witness, Dauntless Bodyguard, that kind of stuff. I think that uh, I think Hero of Precinct One would be better as a Danto Vanguard. Um, you know, since we're we need to be aggressive, and a Danto Vanguard's good at that and good at staying alive. Uh, so I think I would rather have a Danto Vanguard over Hero. And then Hunted Witness was just not good. It's just, it's one of the worst white one drops in my opinion. I think one power creature is just, it's just so under, underpowered, uh, in standard. Like you need a, a ton of ways to grow this thing reliably all the time, basically, even, even with us having mentor stuff. It's just not a very good card. There's, you know, like, White Weenie plays a lot of other one-drops that I like more. Like, uh, for example, Dauntless Bodyguard, I think, is is a better card most of the time. Uh, you know, even because Bodyguard's just fine late or on turn one, it's the it's the 2-1. I'd rather have Legion's Landing than Hunted Witness. Sure, it makes a 1-1 body also, but if you ever flip Le Legion's Landing, it's a real big game, and it can, it can take over games. I think Legion's Landing is just a... A much stronger card, for example. Uh, there's also like the two one that gains flying, wherever that card is. That thing, Sky Marcher Aspirant. I'd I'd rather have the two one. That if you know if the board stalls, you can have like the flying creature kind of thing. Like that game one that we lost to Drakes. Um, you know, if we just had like Aspirants, that they, they could have gained. You know, one they would have ended the game a lot faster too. Uh, they could have. Um, block to flyer or something like that too so those are those are a couple of cards that i would i'd rather ha have over hunted witness um because yeah i think i mean i do think white weenie is a really strong deck and that was also a problem for us having so many check lands that is true we had a whole lot of check lands that that was a problem. It's just kind of tough to do three color. Three color is really tough, but playing playing like two color splash Judith makes sense. But I think it it should just be even more aggressive and like I maybe just like have like Conclave Tribunal instead of Mortify. There, and like Challenger can be like another one drop. Get like more one drops. Because uh, you'd already have like 12 2 drops if you want Daredevil and you want Adanto Vanguard. I think that's enough 2s. Get some more 1s. Get, you know, like Legion's Landing and Sky Marcher Aspirant. Uh, you know, the deck needs to be aggressive. And uh, Mortify is pretty tough to cast. Benelish Marshall was good. It was good, and and I I honestly don't really mind the that that kind of three color mana base with this. I think I'd rather the Blood Crypt be another planes, and kind of go heavier on white still, you know, with like the more white one drops. Turn Blood Crypt into planes, and just move away from Mortify because it costs red, with like Conclave Tribunal or with Lava Coil. And I think that's that's perfectly reasonable. Uh, didn't love Unbreakable Formation and Integrity in the sideboard. They just, those weren't cards I was ever like thrilled to bring in, but just kind of brought in at times because didn't have other things to bring in. I'd rather have, I don't know, more specialized cards or something, or, uh, I don't know, I don't know exactly what. I'd kind of look at like different white weenie deck lists. We have I have seen like White Weenie Splash Judith do pretty good. And that's probably where you want to kind of take the deck is like White Weenie Splash Judith kind of thing. Ixalan's binding costs too much. Like you'd rather have Conclave Tribunal. That that costs a lot less. Four mana is is too much for the deck. If you want to go four mana, a Johnny is certainly worthwhile. A Johnny could be a good sideboard card. 
uh, against control. That's you know that's that's a good cyborg card against control also. So there we go. Marty humans definitely went better than last time. On the right track. Uh, still some work to do. But there we go. So if you're watching this video later on on YouTube, uh, one thanks for watching and. I'll see you for the next video.